ladies and gentlemen, my name is Wolf, and welcome back to Destiny 2. I'm going to be coming at you guys today with another PvP build, this one for the Gunslinger. I have been falling in love with Gunslinger over the past couple of, uh, well, I suppose past day or so, really. I used to love playing Gunslinger in Destiny 1, um, but in Destiny 2, I found Golden Gun to be a little bit lackluster, and when I picked it up in the beta and we were stuck with Six Shooter, I absolutely hated it and wasn't a big fan of Six Shooter. But now, with uh, the way you can do things in Destiny 2, now that we actually have our hands on it, I am absolutely falling in love with Gunslinger, and I'm going to be bringing this into Trials. This is the build I'm going to be running with, and you guys know I like to do things a little bit differently in my Destiny 2 guides. I like to do a quick little bit of coverage in about sub two minutes to run over the build and the build guide, and then we'll go in depth into things afterwards. Now I make a little bit of a little bit of a trade for that because most people like to drag their videos out to 12 or 15 minutes before they actually make their point, so they can reap the watch time and the ad revenue and all that sort of thing. I am still very very appreciative if you do make it to the end because I do a little montage at the end. But um, yeah, so most people don't get to the point until the end. I like to do things a little bit differently in that if you're coming back for the third or fourth time, you can get all the information you need in the first couple minutes or so. Now, for that small, small trade, I ask for, if you would so kindly, a like and clicking that big red button, and even more so, clicking that bell notification button if you think I've earned it by the end of the video. I get to see a little bit, of mo or a little bit more of you in uh, my comment section, and you get to see a little bit more of me and my guides in your sub box. Now, I've done enough little self-promotion, let's actually get into the guide, shall we? So. I'm going to run through everything in two minutes, pretty quick, and then we'll go in-depth afterwards. Alright, Gunslinger, of course. Uh, Mighty Multi-Tool, absolutely exceptional. Near overpowered in some people's eyes. This weapon is pretty much god-tier all around. Um, but you can use any weapon you want, really, any weapon that you feel works well and that you can play defensively with. So, primary slot, you can run Mighty Multi-Tool if you have it. Pretty fantastic, pretty powerful, and really good for the build. But another thing I'm going to recommend is any kind of scout rifle or pulse rifle, like a long range type of weapon. Um, the vigilance wing would also be fantastic here, but I don't have the vigilance wing just yet. And one thing I wanted to make sure I mention, I haven't covered it just yet, is that weapons with projectiles create an effect, an area of effect detonation on impact. These don't have damage drop off. So the reason the better devils is so powerful is you hit someone, that shot does damage, and then the explosion does damage, but the explosion doesn't have da uh, damage drop off like everything else does, like the shots from Better Devils does. Um, other weapons you can use whatever you want. I use the mini tool because it synergizes with the multi tool. Power weapon, you can use whatever gets you kills here. Um, rocket launcher, fusion rifle, that sort of thing. Mess around with a fusion rifle, got two people with one shot. Pretty proud of that. All around, pretty good. Now, stats wise, you can use. Um, whatever you want to, depending on what you're doing. If you're doing quick play, um, recovery is decent, resilience is decent. If you're doing um, Trials of Osiris or competitive, resilience is uh, resilience is okay. I'm running resilience at the moment, um, but you want to opt for either recovery or you can go full mobility. Certain people like to play that way as well, so you can outstrafe people and do things a little bit differently because they don't plan on being alive. They plan on winning their uh, their one v one gunfight or winning a one v two gunfight and that being their life. So that's why going for mobility is better in some people's eyes. I'm running Resilience right now, doing a little bit of experimentation, and let's be honest, I look like a badass. So that's part of the reason I'm running non-resilience, but all in all, this has actually been pretty good, because in those melee fights, I seem to come out on top, as people are trying to beat the crap out of me with a melee, and I kill them with a sliver of health left, and then I wait afterwards and get my health back. So with playing defensive, you don't really need to worry about recovery, because keep in mind I'm playing scout rifle, and long range, I don't need to worry about recovery because I'll always be at that point where I'm able to survive. The higher resilience means I can take more shots from the Mida. Bringing this into trials, everyone's going to have a Mida. Moving to the exotic, this is going to be young. Oh god, I'm going to butcher that name. Amkara's um, Spine, which I think this should be baseline if I'm going to be honest, but I absolutely love this, which is Wish Dragon Teeth increases trip mine duration to 30 seconds, I believe, and marks enemies damaged by the blast. Exceptional. Love this. And you'll be seeing more of it in the montage later on. Um, Gear-wise, you can run... I'm running all resilient stuff and whatever works for you. Moving over to Gunslinger, of course, Trip Mine Grenade, Marksman's Dodge to reload, um, whatever jump works for you, and the top tree, 
without six shooter. Okay, that was a little bit over two minutes, but I tried my best. It is a little bit late. I apologize for being a little bit too slow. Right. Now, that being said, let's go in depth into things, shall we? So, also, I just want to say how absolutely badass the raid shader is for any weapon you can put it on, but I'm also pretty sad because I can't put it on the Mighty Multi Tool because I can only put ornaments on it. So, um, kind of sad about that. But, um, yeah, so primary weapons, whatever you want. Uh, Mighty Multi Tool is extremely pre prevalent and extremely powerful. Um, projectile weapons, covered that earlier. Um, secondary, whatever you get kills with. Last Hope is extremely powerful as well at the moment. And so is Uriel's Gift. I don't really like Uriel's Gift. Um, it's, it's scope is not really for me. But it's nice and long range. I'd suggest having a long range weapon and then a short range weapon. Which is why I like the Scout Rifle and Submachine Gun. Because I like to play defensive with this. So playing back, this allows me to just pull out the Submachine Gun when they get close to me. And if I'm going to be honest, out of all the subs I've tried, Mighty Mini Tool is absolutely my favorite. And I'll continue to use it even if I don't have the multi tool in my build, because it's just the best submachine gun I've put my hands on so far. Uh, power weapon, use whatever gets you kills. Honestly, if you're good with rockets, use rockets. If you're good with a shotgun, the shotgun. But you can use swords to go into third person and peek around corners. All around exceptional. And swords in PvP right now will pretty much one shot you. Uh, moving over to gear, you want to try and optimize as much as possible. Most people don't value mobility all that highly. Take a look at my Arc Strider build for why I think mobility is pretty decent. Not the best, obviously, but I found myself being able to outstrafe people at long range as long as I had a pulse rifle or an assault rifle or that sort of thing. Well, not only really an auto rifle, but long range weapons, you could outstrafe someone with mobility. And surviving that one or two extra shots, especially with Mida or up against Midas, will save your life. So now, um, moving down. The Wish Dragon Teeth, the mark, is pretty much the exact same as a Night Stalker mark. It'll mark people through walls. It's exceptional. And increasing the Trip Mine Grenade duration to 30 seconds should be baseline, in my opinion. Shouldn't have to be on, ex on an exotic, but I digress. The Destiny 2 exotics are average at best. But this allows me to play pretty much, I want to say, like, kind of campy, but also, like, defensive. Combined with this, they'll be marked through a wall, so you can go and track them down. And even more so, I do believe it marks them to your entire team. So perfect for people who like to play defensively. And in this build, we're going for a defensive playstyle. Now, I mean, gear-wise, get whatever, um, uh, get whatever. What is it? Armor mods work for you. Get as much um, of your specific stat or solar boosts um, as possible. I have arc, and my gear is just a mishmash of mishmash of stuff, honestly. So yeah. Get whatever um, mods affect um, Gunslinger or whatever stats you're going with. Now, moving into Gunslinger, of course, I covered the grenades. All of the grenades for Gunslinger outside of Trip Mine feel extremely lackluster. Incendiary grenades, I've seen them hit for literally 8 damage before, so I stopped using those entirely. Swarm grenades are a joke. The swarm grenades can't really do that much damage to anyone. Trip Mine grenades have literally gotten me a kill from across the map. Because I threw it down, and of course it lasts for 30 seconds. So I run, a, I run away to move up and go revive a teammate or go and plant a bomb, and I'll just, and I'll just get a kill. Um, now moving over to the top tree, you'll see things are a little bit out of place here, being that I'm missing a talent. But the way Gunslinger works is you don't actually want to trait six shooter, because six shooter is complete trash. Six shooter makes it so you can shoot your golden gun six times, right? Now, that used to be baseline in Destiny 2. I wish it still was. But that, all in all, sounds okay, right? But then, when you actually pull out your golden gun, it lasts for, I think it's like a minute, to maybe a minute and a half or something like that, just holding it and not shooting it. But with Six Shooter, pull out your golden gun and it lasts for 10 seconds, right? So if you run the corner and there's no one there, and there's no one really near you, the golden gun's timed out. You're done. Right? So you have to make sure you pop it at the perfect spot and get as many people as possible with it. Now, in trials, or in competitive, people will see you popped Golden Gun in the bottom left-hand corner, and they'll all hide. So, everyone will hide, they'll see the super, and they'll run. That 10 seconds of your six-shooter just times out pretty much instantly, unless everyone's already caught in a gunfight. Now, you want to make sure that you use Golden Gun correctly. I love this super, it's a lot of fun, but it can be really disheartening when you pop your super 
and you see people on the radar, you run towards them, and then they just disappear and your golden gun times out. And then as you're in the phase of putting your gun away, you get mowed down by someone and you die. All right. So using golden gun, you want to be careful with it, you want to stick to cover, and you don't really want to run out into the open unless you know you're going to get a kill. You have to trust your aim with this, you really do, um, and make sure your aim is on point. Because if, you, if it's not, you're going to miss a lot of golden gun shots, and you're going to be very sad. But there is a, an ability in the top tree here, which is dead shot. Significantly improves your ability to hit with golden gun. This gives you aim assist. I don't know if it does on PC. I'm not entirely sure. This kind of works a little bit weird on PC. But it's a kind of placebo effect, in my opinion. But it's whatever lets you hit more golden gun shots. And you only have three shots with this, so you want to make them count. But in trials... Three shots, killing three people, leaving one guy alive. If you're playing, um, what is it? Uh, countdown. If you're playing Countdown, you can wreck a team with good golden gun placement. So make sure not to waste it, and make sure to pop it when you see someone on the radar. You can see someone around the corner, go back behind the corner, pop your golden gun, come around the corner and pick them off. This also will take out a Titan Barricade in one shot, and a Titan that is blocking with their Sentinel Shield, will also be nearly one-shotted or one-shotted, I don't remember fully. Um, then moving over to the skill tree here, we have Explosive Throwing Knife. Now, this thing is rather weird, but at the same time, really good. You can huck this fella, and you can use it, I essentially use it as like a literal grenade. Because when it hits someone, it'll do a lot of damage. It does like 72 and then an extra like 8 damage or something like that. Um, that's just from the explosion as well, that's not actually hitting the target. You hit the target, I'm pretty sure it does even more, but I haven't really hit anyone in PvP in the past little while, so I end up using it just as an exploding little thing. So it'll do pretty significant damage, and if you chuck it in a choke point, or where you know someone is around a corner, it'll weaken them just enough to give you that advantage to take them out really, really quickly. And moving on, we have Chains of Woe. This is the reason that you play the top tree gunslinger with no six shooter, is Chains of Woe and Explosive Throwing Knife. Because these two are better than the entirety of the bottom tree, which is all for PvE, and works on um, killing enemies with a golden gun headshot. Now, practice makes perfect is not bad for PvP either, but Chains of Woe is just so much better. Getting a headshot will make it so you reload faster. And this is almost like lightning speed reloads all around, just exceptional. It really is. When you put this on and you start getting kills with it in PvP, and you start picking headshots with your... Um, your Vigilance Wing and your Mita Multi-Tool, or from long range, you'll pretty much always have a full clip, just because of how fast it reloads. So for those of us who like to reload after we kill someone, then Chains of Woe is perfect for you. Now, I've ran on a little bit too long, honestly, longer than I expected, but I think that's pretty much covering everything in uh, this Gunslinger build that I'm going to be bringing in the Trials. And with that being said, Hope you guys have enjoyed, and I hope you've learned something. I hope you take this into trials, and you kick my... I can't swear, because YouTube will get me for it, but you know what I mean. I hope you destroy me with my own build, and show me it being played in even better potential. Now, that's all for me, and as always, take care, lads. Let's roll the montage.